Hello and welcome to BA131 Module 1. Let's go ahead and get started to see what we're going to be learning this week. As I mentioned in the welcome video, this module and each module follows the same format. You're going to have the introduction to the topic, what we're going to be learning. Any lectures or videos are going to be here. In the first one, because this is the first module, we have this video syllabus review. This is the video that I'm recording now. It's going to live here. Right now it's a placeholder. And we have any videos, resources, then you're going to have the assignments. So you have the homework, class, exercise, and discussion. And in this case, as I mentioned before, we have the syllabus quiz that is due the second week, and then a summary. As I mentioned before, the recommendation is that you go through these in order. And to go from one to the other, you can click on each one, or you can click next at the bottom. I have them open here, but you can go through here. And as you go through, at the bottom, after you finish, you can click next to go to the other one. In this introduction, this is what we're going to be covering this week, module one, week one. We're going to have the introductions, the meet and greet online, which is the discussion I mentioned, syllabus review, the class expectations, that's in that video that I showed you where it is. I'm going to show you again in just a moment. And any Q&A questions and answers that you may have about the class. We have a written translation of Spanish subtitles for a census video, proofing content. There is a basic review of material that is covered in the introductory class, BA 130. Here is a link to the demographics and statistics about the Latino population, a CNN article. You can click right there and read through it. That's one of your reading assignments. Code of Ethics for Interpreters is at the bottom of this page. The modes of interpretation, we have simultaneous, we have consecutive, and we have sight translation. So simultaneous is when someone speaks, and at the same time, the interpreter renders. Consecutive is when someone speaks, they pause, and then the interpreter renders the interpretation. And then sight translation is when someone reads a document in one language and renders verbally the interpretation into the other language. Again, this is covered in the introductory class. If you're taking both classes, you might see some overlap here. So if you're taking BA 130 and BA 131, some of the assignments are going to be very similar. It's important to develop the knowledge, skills, and abilities, the KSAs for translation and interpretation. We'll see these at the bottom, but they're again in BA 130. Develop your listening skills and techniques, and it's important for you to understand colloquialism, regionalism, and slang in the source and the target language. Again, if you are taking taking both BA 131, this class, and BA 130, that focus is more in the BA 130, the intro class. And these are the things that you have to do to complete this module. You're going to watch the video lecture, review the concepts as we just mentioned. You're going to participate in discussion one, which is in this module. I'll show you that in just a moment. Class exercise homework again, I'll show you those in just a moment and complete the syllabus quiz, which is due at the end of next week, module two. We, from time to time, are going to be covering or looking at translation bloopers. What are translation bloopers? That is that in everyday life, we might encounter situations where either the written text is translated incorrectly, the oral interpretation is done incorrectly, they don't follow the source language message, etc. Take a look at these because it's important to learn from other people's mistakes, so we don't repeat them. And it's also good to present positive and good renditions, good translations. So these are from previous classes. These are sometimes are presented from other students who have found them out and about. So I encourage you, if you find any good translations or any mistranslations, that you can share them with the class. These are some examples of good translations that are found at Starbucks. This was during COVID, of course. Please maintain social distancing until your name is called. Thank you for your understanding. Por favor, mantengan el distanciamiento social hasta que oigan su nombre. Oigan, quizás escuchen en vez de oigan, but that's just a minor thing. Gracias por su comprensión. Our store is open for grab and go. So phrases like this, you want to pay attention. This is impossible to translate literally word for word. How would you say this in Spanish, right? If you do a literal translation, la tienda está abierta para agarrar y e irse, right? It doesn't make sense in Spanish. So one of the principles we're going to see in our class is that we do not translate words. We translate meaning. 
So what is the meaning of this information, this situation, this context, and what is the best way of presenting that into the target language? So grab and go is very easy to understand in English. How would you say that in Spanish? Well, you have to use a phrase that explains the concept. Nuestra tienda está abierta, right? Our store is open. So far, so good. Para comprar artículos para llevar. This is a very good rendition of grab and go. Okay, we have temporarily closed our seating area, but we remain open to serve you. Hemos cerrado temporalmente el área para sentarse. Good. Pero estamos abiertos para servirles. Okay, not bad. Please accept our apologies for any inconvenience. Look at this. Please accept our apologies for any inconvenience. In English, very well expressed, very well rendered. In Spanish, we have a very concise phrase that encapsulates all of this, right? Please accept our apologies for any inconvenience. In Spanish, three words. Disculpen las molestias. Usually in English, you have a certain number of words. When you translate that into Spanish, usually the Spanish is from 15 to 20% longer on average. But in this case, we have a phrase that is well understood, widely known, that encompasses all of this. Disculpen las molestias. So in this case, it's the opposite. We have a very short Spanish phrase that encapsulates the meaning of seven words into three words. So that's a good use of colloquial language. As I mentioned in the syllabus video, this is an OER, Open Education Resources class. We have a lot of materials here, and this is one. Uh, the concepts that is taught in BA 130, the Code of Ethics, this is the Code of Ethics from the American Translators Association. I want you to review these. The Code of Ethics has eight components, and here is from the Judicial Council of California, the knowledge, skills, and abilities that are essential for court interpretation. Go through this, read through these, and this is what is expected of interpreters. This is a list of professional interpreter associations, not a complete list, but again, review this for your edification, for your information. This includes both spoken interpreters, written translations, and interpreters for the deaf, the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf. And here are some skill building exercises. We're going to use a few of these in these classes, but this is a good document for you to have to reference in order for you to practice and develop your skills. Some suggested skills for interpreters of all languages to develop simultaneous interpreting skills and for site translations. So review these. We're going to be doing these in the weeks to come during this class, but this is a reference for you to get you started in what to do, how to practice. Again, if you go here, you're going to go to the video lecture for the syllabus, which is going to be here. The next video lecture is the one I'm recording now. This is just a placeholder from a previous class. This census video is something that you're going to do in your homework, in your assignment. So this is an assignment where you're going to practice translating subtitles. Here is the assignment, homework one. This is the same video here. So in your translation career, you may be asked to translate subtitles. Subtitles are a little bit different than a regular translation because as you'll see, it needs to fit the certain number of frames or scenes, etc. Once you watch the video, you'll see what I mean. In fact, let's go there now. Let me show you the video with audio so that you can understand what I mean. I want you to notice the subtitles here, how they follow what's going on, and it's very short. So let's take a quick look. There will be parties again soon, and family gatherings. There will be parades, and sporting events, and concerts. To help our kids... Do you see how that each phrase follows the frames, follows the visuals that you have here? So you have to keep this in mind when you do your translations of subtitles. Communities, when they come back together, respond to the 2020 census now. Spend a few minutes online today to impact the next 10 years of healthcare, infrastructure, and education. Go to 2020census.gov and respond today to make America's tomorrow brighter. It's time to shape our future. So you have to fit the same amount of text into this video. So what you're going to do here is that you have this Word document, and what you're going to be doing is following 
the translation. It might take a little while to load, depending on your system. So here is the document, the PSA video. Census is the title of the project, the video. This is 30 seconds, 30 second script. And here is the English. Keep this short. There will be parties again soon so that it fits into the time and family gatherings. Write that there in Spanish. There will be parades and sporting events, etc. So go through this and you're going to turn this in with your submission. You are going to be writing in formal Spanish, right in the usted format, not to. So you have to make sure that you have the correct subject verb agreement when writing the translation. In this scenario, you have been informed that your target audience are Latinos from Mexico. So do not include any Spanish that is regional or colloquial that only Latinos from other specific countries will understand. So this is your target audience. And make sure to proofread because if you're missing any accent mark or any tildes or have any misspelled words, you're going to have a lesser grade. You're not going to get an A. So double check your translation, double check your spelling, the tildes, etc. Even though this translation is a short one, this is like translating a slogan, a billboard, where you have a lot of information into a very small space. Sometimes it might take you a little bit longer to get through, to get the right timing, the right number of words, etc. So for the deadline, of course, check the deadline below for this. And this is the grading rubric. And you're going to submit your assignment right there. For the class exercise, this is another scenario. You work as an interpreter and translator for an advertising agency that just received a contract from the OC Healthcare Agency. Your company is tasked with producing new healthcare videos for the client, both in English and in Spanish. And your supervisor is asking you to proof three videos from the OC Healthcare Agency in Spanish and English and to write a one-page opinion slash report on your findings and recommendations for these three videos. Make sure you review spelling, grammar, compare the English to the Spanish, was the interpreting done correctly, any terms that you could have used instead, any better terms, and explain why. You have these videos here and here, so compare these two. These two videos, compare these two, and this one is only in Spanish. So play this one, and this one is different. You're going to check the Spanish and look for any mistakes, misspellings, better usage of words, etc. And again, you can upload your one-page Word document here. The discussion is here. This is very important for you to complete this week because this is how we will take attendance. So answer these questions in this discussion. So make sure to subscribe for you to receive notifications because you're going to have to reply to two of your classmates. So your name, birthplace, etc. This is for your information. This is a little bit more about you. Are you a full-time or part-time student? Whether you just started the Translation Interpreter Certificate Program or are about to finish, please share with the class the following. What do you see yourself? And share one short-term educational and career goal, one long-term educational and career goal. You can be creative. You can use uh, video, post pictures, etc. But be sure to answer these questions. When you reply, be sure to reply to at least two of your classmates. So your post is due by Friday and your replies to at least two of your classmates is due by Sunday. And your replies need to be something substantive, not just, oh, that's great. Oh, I like that. Oh, me too. Whatever. So it needs to be a bit more substantive than just that. So please note that it's important for you to participate in this exercise so that you can continue in the class. If people do not participate in this discussion, you may be dropped from the class the second week. So this is very, very important. We also have the syllabus quiz right here. So review the syllabus, have the syllabus available, open. It's an open book quiz, so to speak. So be sure to have that done before the second week. And this is the summary of what you will have learned this week. And that's it for module one. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a great week.